Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, Engaging Military Families on Social Media with Mr. Bob Bursch and Mr. Bruce Moody. My name is Coral Owen. I'm the Professional Development Coordinator for the Military Families Learning Network, and we are so glad that you have joined us today. This learning opportunity is brought to you by the Family Transitions Concentration Area of the Military Families Learning Network. Webinar resources, including presentation slides, can be found at learn.extension.org slash events slash 2166 under event materials at the bottom of the page. If I could please have presenter rights, we'll go ahead and proceed forward. Thank you. Sorry for the brief delay, folks. Uh, the Military Families Learning Network is part of a DOD-USDA partnership for military families, offering research and evidence-based professional development through engaged online communities. You can explore more about our communities and resources at www.extension.org slash militaryfamilies. I'd like to let you know that you can join our MFLN webinar list by clicking on or, I'm sorry, by clicking on the link in the chat pod, uh, it's www.eextension.org slash pages slash 62831. At this time, I would like to turn things over to Anita Herring, who will do a more focused introduction of today's webinar, as well as introduce our guest speakers. Anita, I believe you may be muted. Oh, can you hear me now? It looks like it is finally working. OK, great. Thank you. Well, once again, as Carl mentioned, my name is Anita Herring, and I am the social media specialist for Family Transitions. And on behalf of um, our concentration area, we'd like to welcome, to welcome you to our webinar this morning, Engaging Military Families on Social Media. And we would like you to continue to engage with us uh, beyond our webinars and also us to engage with you. And we would like you to like us on Facebook at MFLN Family Transitions, on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find us on YouTube uh, at the Military Family Learning Network uh, channel. We are very excited this morning to have two presenters with us. Bob Birch has worked in communications, education, and web technology for more than 20 years. Uh, he's currently a web technology specialist with North Dakota State University Agricultural Communication and a member of the eExtension Network Literacy Community of Practice, uh, which works to engage professionals in uh, a community built around learning in, uh, in networks. Bob lives in West Fargo with his wife and 10-year-old son. He has another son and daughter both attending the uh, University of North Dakota. Then our second presenter is Bruce Moody, and he holds a master's degree in communications from Oklahoma University, and he assumed his duties as public affairs specialist in the Military Community Outreach Office of the Military Community and Family Policy in November of 2010. And as a member of the Military Community Outreach Team, he supports a wide variety of efforts to inform service members and their families about the programs, resources, and also information available to help them meet the challenge of military life. Mr. Moody's efforts include the development of communication campaigns, such as the Month of the Military Child, 
Uh, he leads the organization's presence and engagement on social media. He writes speeches and blog posts for the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Military Community and Family Policy and responds to media queries about the organization. Before coming or before joining Military Community and Family Policy, uh, Mr. Moody served seven years as a public affairs specialist at Navy Installations Command. Uh, in 27, uh, Mr. Moody retired from the Navy after serving 20 years in public affairs positions around the fleet. So we have a wealth of knowledge that is coming uh, to this webinar this morning, and we're so excited to have our two presenters with us. We just introduce our presenters, uh, find out who they are, what they do now. Uh, now we would like to ask you as the audience if you could tell us about your work. So please type the number for your work in the chat pod over on the left hand side. And if one of the above areas above doesn't quite fit with what you do, please feel free to type it in. We have many coming from our military branches today, uh, as well as other community-based, civilian, some joining in from extension. And you can keep typing that in. Man, this will give our presenters uh, an idea of who the audience is out there. Uh, and also, if you have any additional questions uh, throughout, um, we'll be able to respond to those as well. So keep them coming in. It looks like there's over 70 people on the webinar uh, this morning. So Bob, both Bob and Bruce are going to be leading conversations with you uh, as we move forward. And we'll be utilizing this chat box on the left-hand side. Throughout the webinar this morning, Bob and Bruce are going to help us today to understand and the Department of Defense policy governing the use of social media, know and be ready to use the best practices for reaching those service members and military families, understand the concept of what social capital is, and know and be ready to use strategies for building community using social media, especially during times of transition. And some of our key takeaways that we want you to keep in mind as we start is so that though there are risks, social media has clear benefits in engaging military families. And both of our presenters will uh, really be um, articulating that and, and showing you um, some tools, resources. Understanding social capital can help you build those really trusted relationships that you want to develop and maintain through social media. Follow best practices can maximize their social media reach. And the community is built at the point where stories intersect. So share your story. So with that, I'm going to um, hand it over to uh, Bruce. Bruce? Good, good, uh, good day, everybody. Um, well, I'm really pleased to be here today. Uh, really pleased to have the opportunity to to engage you on this really important topic, and uh, certainly social media is a, a big concern. But um, as 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 we had uh, alluded to in the in the opening, it's um, it's still seen by the DoD in practice and in policy as uh, as a very useful and necessary tool for engaging engaging many many different audiences. So I hope to use this opportunity to talk to um, some of the concerns and, and, and what we're doing about these concerns. So with that, if uh, people would like to respond in the chat box, what are some of those concerns that you have of using social media in your work?
you know, I'm seeing things like operational security and certainly OPSEC, op uh, operational security. These have uh, always been and will always be uh, big concerns for us. And uh, what, what uh, it amounts to for us is really uh, there's, there's a need to educate military families in particular. You know, the military member um, um, has, a, has, a, has a full stack of mandatory training that they have to go to. Uh, and so they tend to be very, um, very clear on what is expected of them with regard to uh, conduct with sensitive information. And our adversaries understand that. And you know, it's a, our adversaries are, are uh, pretty understandably practicing what we would call asymmetrical warfare. They're going to the, 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 the weakest um, uh, point of entry, which uh, is actually uh, the family members. In fact, it's actually the kids. Uh, so it's really our our duty to to be talking with military families to make sure that they uh, are not putting information out there about deployments, about operational uh, strengths and weaknesses, and uh, um, things like that. Uh, you know, looking at this uh, this uh, this next slide, we understand that there really are risks. There are very very real risks. Uh, um, this is a screenshot of Central Command, uh, after their um, Twitter feed had been uh, hijacked by ISIS, uh, this was a very, very bad day. In spite of that, um, the Central Command's Twitter feed is very much uh, up and running, as is uh, 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 the DOD's uh, um, presence on social media. Um, so, um, so, so with regard to being cyber smart, um, you can you can look for this if you want. There's, well, I'm providing links to just about everything I'm referring to here. But there is a memo that was put out earlier this year, interestingly, um, put out pretty much in tandem with our new Secretary of Defense's visit to U.S. Cyber Command to say, look, we are going to continue to be on social media. We're going to do it carefully. You know, and um, interestingly, um, as some of you may know, while yes, there are some pretty sophisticated hackers out there, what continues to be the easy way in is, is uh, social engineering, otherwise known as phishing. So this memo says that we're going to be smart. We're going to make sure that we are um, in, in informing people so that they understand how to deal with these phishing schemes and, and, and those who are, who are using the, um, the social media for predatory practices. Um, this is a slide that I just can't part with because it's just such an, such an awesome slide. But it is, it is true. We, 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 said, we said loose lips sinks ships uh, before. Uh, and now it's uh, loose tweets. You know, it's so much easier and quicker to put out a message that can be received globally. And so we make sure that uh, we're talking with family members so that they know that um, many people are listening to what they have to say. Now, I have a question to the group. This is this is a question that I would like to to to, to toss out to you. Have you uh, been hacked before? Have you experienced ha either your work email, your personal email, um, and in, in, in uh, primarily, I'm getting a lot of no's. It's interesting. Um, okay, I okay, I got, I got a, I got a yes. So, okay, um, viruses aside, if you are dealing with a hack. Um, what is the first thing that you did after uh, either your Facebook account or your email was hacked? What was the first thing that you did? Change security setting, right. Change the password, right, right. A lot of people, when I ask this question during presentations, they say they freaked out, which is also a, you know, a very, very uh, a reasonable thing to do. So here's the first thing, the, the first things, uh, the first th two things that you do after you've been hacked. First, you justifiably freak out a little bit. Okay, that's just going to happen. Secondly, 
what you do is you go in there and, 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 and right away you change your, your, your password. And the reason I say freak out is, 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 is because the important here is to have a plan. You know, if you are, if you are in a professional capacity, if you have a Twitter feed, for example, like, like Central Command or Facebook, or, or if you have an official, official social media platform, and many people use it for important information, you need to have a pre-approved statement ready so that if you are freaking out really in your diminished intellectual capacity of being stressed, you have this statement ready to go that you can copy and paste and say, folks, as you can tell, we've been hacked. We have immediately responded to the situation. Your, your information uh, and, 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 and um, 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 your security is, is uh, I important to us and, and, and nothing has been compromised. You have the statement written and ready, so you just copy and paste it. That's 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 really the, the that's really the the the, the short of, of having a plan for being hacked. Um, and and uh, and I and it's really valuable, I think, that we have these uh, links being put up in the in the chat box here. Um, but essentially, DoD has on defense.gov uh, a, a section dedicated to social media and there is one page which has a couple of dozen links to all things social media um, and so if you go to that page you can see things like the social media education and training uh, guide to keeping your uh, social media account secure, secure and many many other things um, which are very useful to you to understand how the DOD goes about um, keeping uh, cyber security uh, out in the, in the floor. I will say another thing. Um, we're coming up on the month of uh, October, which is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So this is, this is how, how, how we see it. Um, if there is a desire to talk about cybersecurity, October is the month to do it because you will be joining a national conversation on this topic. Um, that's you know the uh, we don't contribute. We do we write some of the president's proclamations regarding military families. We don't write this one, but but there are other proclamations from previous years which you can read. But the you know the short of it with regard to these proclamations, it's it, it's saying that um, social media is here to stay. It's very important. It's how we get things done in our personal and, and pro professional lives, and we need to do it safely. So I would encourage you all, if you have uh, tools and messages to get out, and you have uh, audiences to get them to, I would target the month of uh, October to, to, to do it. Now we would like to take some time to find out from you uh, as participants, what are the benefits of using social media in your work? If I could uh, just toss out, I'm seeing a lot of these uh, comments. Um, there was uh, yesterday a very strong earthquake in Chile. And uh, that is, um, because it was uh, several hundred miles offshore, it, uh, it, it's resulting in uh, tsunami warnings, which may or may not uh, come to be in Hawaii and uh, along the, uh, the West Coast. So when Facebook was really getting up to speed, um, uh, it, 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 it was it was pretty much at a point where families were actively relying on on things like Facebook for for important information, and this was fascinating. It was with the Navy at the time um, because there was a there was a, a similar earthquake off the coast of Chile uh, around 2008 ish, 
and they and 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 it, and it set off a, a serious tsunami warnings uh, in Hawaii. And they asked people afterwards, "Where did you go for command information?" And almost the the far and away, the the majority of people said, "We went to Facebook. We went to our command's Facebook page for official information." So it is uh, certainly a place where you can enjoy cat videos, but right next to those cat videos people expect to see very serious information. So it is, it is a place for the full conversation. Um, I, 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 would, I, would, I, would, um, I would say that social media is not merely a part of our conversation. It, it's, a, it's a part of life in general. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in the world that are really, <laughs> that probably could not have happened uh, without social media. Um, um, the gentleman uh, down in the uh, the center of the screen wearing a white coat. Um, who is that? One. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the guy. That is Dr. Uh, Walter Palmer, who shot Cecil the lion. Now what we have is a new phenomena which is coming our way, which is global vigilantism. This guy cannot go anywhere, anywhere, without a uh, security guard. And there are several people, and I don't need to name names, but there are several people on this on, the, on this planet who are in similar similar situations. Um, that's just one aspect of it, and and, I, and really what it gets to is just the extent to which. A conversation can tie people from around the globe into uh, a single conversation. And so there's good and there's bad. And in spite of that, the DOD still says, you know, social media is an integral part of the strategic communication and public affairs mission of the DOD. It's something we have to protect it, and we're going to do so with vigilance. Okay, this is a term that um, we have coined, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's simply a, a, a merging of millennials and, and, and military. And it's um, honestly, it's, it's simply a term to remind us that the majority of our force are um, they're the they're the social media generations. These are the people who expect social media to be front and center to their lives. And so we use social media to to reach out to them to to uh is there any of the dialogue um, anyway um so the military ennials are the people who are um our audience they're they're in uniform they're family members and they they expect to learn things and and converse on things uh through social media. So hi everybody, uh, this is Bob Birch. Um, thanks so much for uh, joining us today uh, from me. I know that uh, everybody's welcomed you already, but I didn't get a chance to do that. Um, as we transition from some of the stuff that, that Bruce is saying, and we're gonna have some overlap as well, um, my interest is really in how do we build community and social media, and, and we're gonna talk a little about, bit about that, and I see Sarah's already posted the, the link there for the social media communication with military spouses report from REACH. And it's really, a, I think it's a valuable document. It provides an overview of the existing research, which there isn't a lot of, but what we know about uh, specifically how military spouses are using social media. And some of the ways that they are, are using it are to acquire or provide information, uh, to seek support, and to discuss upcoming events. And when they're seeking support, and this is this is a really, I think, important part for helping professionals to, to realize that they are out there seeking support in social media. And it might be the kind of support that in the past helping professionals, uh, whether that's uh, in the military or in cooperative extension, have been used to providing that, that support themselves. But uh, in one of the studies cited in the, the document from REACH, the report from REACH, uh, it found that when they looked at uh, a discussion board for uh, significant others of military members uh, and categorized some of the some of the posts, what they found were 49% of the posts 
sought informational support, a good portion of them sought emotional support, and that those requests varied depending on timing. You know, so emotional support was highest during deployment, request for informational support was highest uh, prior to uh, deployment. And so the, the takeaway here is that, yes, people are using social media, specifically military spouses, and, and they're using it for social support. And Anita might be dealing with a with the sound potential sound issues. Some people have sound issues. Um, there we go. So we'll get to the next slide. And so the idea that people are using social media to seek social support not, is not surprising in view of the communal coping theory. You know, which is this idea that a group of people can pool their resources to deal with adversity. We see this all the time on social media, not just uh, with military spouses but with people who might be dealing with a particular medical condition, who might uh, you know, be supporting a particular cause or trying to change something uh, in their community um, or in the world, and they connect together around that, that affinity, that shared interest, um, and deal with adversity by sharing resources. And so you can see where social media, because of communal coping theory, can be helpful or could possibly be helpful uh, during stressful transitions uh, for military spouses, uh, like deployment and relocation and other uh, transitions as well. And it might heighten resiliency, which, as, as Bruce said, and, or is about to say, I think, um, is really important and something that we want to focus on and could reduce negative outcomes. So, as I said, my real interest in social media comes from this idea that the power lies in building community. That real impact on social media comes from connecting people with each other. So they can support each other, whether that's with information or social support. And so if you're going to do that, there's some things that you should keep in mind uh, as you uh, you know, create your Facebook page or your Twitter account and you start to communicate with people. And the first thing and then the biggest mistake that I think many, many businesses have made over the years and continue to make and, and other organizations as well is that social media is not mass media. It is not uh, by design uh, something that is meant for broadcast, for the bullhorn. And that is a lot of the way that social media ends up being used. Um, I see it happen again and again in my work with Cooperative Extension and, and with other organizations as well, and as I said with businesses, is that people go into social media with the idea to get across their message. And we saw some of that when we asked you guys um, what are the benefits of using social media. Some of it had to do with connecting with communities, um, but some of it also was program promotion or uh, you know, advertising our classes. Those are the kinds of things that are mass media centered. And as we talk about this, uh, I'll just preface this a little bit, it doesn't mean that it's completely unacceptable, but if that's all you're doing on social media, then uh, you might uh, not be working to build the community and get the greatest impact out of social media for the people that you serve. So I look at it as sort of a sliding scale. Uh, One-to-many communication, that, that kind of broadcast mass media approach, is better than silence, right? So some people might say, well, I can't engage people, or I can't do this complex community building, so I'm just not going to be on social media at all. And you know, as, as Bruce said earlier, that's definitely not the approach that, that DOD uh, endorses and it's it's probably not going to do you a lot of good anyway uh, even if you're out there broadcasting at least you're out there you're present in social media and and in today's world you know Bruce called it a part of life uh, and, and integral to communications and those kinds of things in today's world if you don't exist on social media you really don't exist so even that broadcast communication is greater than nothing But I think you can get even more impact even if you just start communicating with people one-on-one. -on -one. 
uh, via social media. Making a connection between you as a health professional or your organization and that individual who might have a particular problem, uh, a particular concern, a particular need. Um, so that, that, I think, makes a greater impact than your just broadcasting messages. Whether those messages are promotional in nature or educational in nature, I think you can have a greater impact in terms of changing someone's behavior, helping them through a particular transition one-to-one -one than if you're just broadcasting. And then at the, at the very end of the scale, um, what I believe is that the greatest impact comes from many-to-many -many communication. And so I, and a lot of that comes through networks. Um, and and that's, that can be, have even a greater impact than one-to-one -one communication. One reason it can is because it scales, right? Um, as an individual, uh, or an individual organization, you can only reach so many people one to one. But if you can use your uh, expertise, um, your information, uh, and your organization to uh, build a community so that everybody's talking to each other, everybody's sharing information, everybody's providing so emotional support and informational support, um, then you can have a huge impact. And so uh, that's what I would really like you to think about is, is how we build community uh, using social media. So thinking about that idea of building community and having real impact, in the chat, can you share what important connections you have made on social media? And, and feel free to you know, be as specific or, or as vague as you feel comfortable being. Have you made a connection on social media that was really important for you personally or professionally or for the person you made the connection with? This one might take a little bit longer, so we'll make sure we'll give you some time to type in the chat pod there. So I'm seeing LinkedIn for job opportunities. That's great if you found a job opportunity, opportunity that way. Reconnecting with people after a long time, something that is definitely, uh, you know, something that we see in social media all the time. Um, Guard families in your state, finding family assistance uh, program Facebook page, that's great. Great, so I think we're seeing some great uh, feedback in there, and you can continue uh, to share that as uh, I pass it on to Bruce. All right. Uh, yeah, sort of following up on, on uh, what, what uh, Bob was saying is, uh, we we definitely try to engage. Uh, we're, 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 our our hope is to engage in um, a two way conversation. Um, and when we send out a, a, a message, it, we're of the mindset that uh, we can't assume that a, a family member is going to be at one particular place at one particular time. Uh, so, so we will take a message and shotgun it out to a number of different places. And uh, when we will only post um, to a place if we have the opportunity to engage, uh, and 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 we will only post if we have the, uh, the 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 manpower, the resources available to 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 engage. Um, but. Um, we are very, very careful about having uh, one message, the very same message, uh, show up so that if you see something on Twitter and then you see it again on Facebook, we want the language to be very consistent. In fact, we, we, create, um, we, we create vocabulary lists that accompany each of our communication programs. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, with regard to uh, finances, some people refer to financial literacy. Some people uh, refer to financial fitness. Some people refer to financial fit, uh, um, readiness. Uh, and, uh, and then there are other terms. We make sure that we choose the very ex exact term that we intend to use, and we create, use that, that language to create one message, and we use many voices to get that very aligned message out. 
so that we don't have confusion and we can meet people where they are and engage them. Um, and when it comes to messages, you know, we are talking to people. We're, and you know, in our case, uh, primarily, we're talking to military families. And uh, it, it, it doesn't take um, it doesn't take uh, much time uh, in, in, in dealing dealing with uh, military families to realize that they they really are resilient and, and, and strong and confident people. We keep saying that, but it's it really is very very true. Um, so we we really treat them with a lot of respect. I, I, I would say that we are very careful in the way that we discuss um, um, uh, programs not to um, refer to people as victims. Um, you know, we, we, we see that military life has its challenges, but um, we also see that we have a, a, a population of people who willingly go into um, being, being military families, and given the right tools, they'll be just fine. Another thing that we um, avoid doing is 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 the snark is 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 um, is getting people to um, go down negative road. Uh, I don't want to name names, but there are other military there are other platforms out there commercial commercial platforms uh, media that target military families, and they get a lot of hits. They get a lot of traffic because they get people to basically complain about things and people love to complain and we really uh, 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 will create messages that um, that just don't do that because it just it's it, it it's um it certainly has a uh, short-term games but 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 not long-term games if you're gained if you're trying to engage people in a meaningful way in a way that gets them empowered to, to make the decisions that they need to make in their personal lives When we are doing social media, and I and I talk to um, 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 I talk to individual installations, I talk to services, uh, I talk to large commands and small, and I let them know that if you are, and this would apply, I think equally well in 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 the nonprofit world, in in the um, in the uh, world of education, if you are going to be engaging any any audience on any topic using social media. You need to make sure your leadership understands um, what you're going to be doing uh, ahead of time. Um, because, and I've seen this before, you start engaging with people and you know sometimes uh, shock, shock, people on social media can be a little bit irrever uh, uh, um, uh, irreverent. And when you see that sort of thing show up on your Facebook wall, Sometimes leadership can come barging into your office and saying, what's going on here? And so it's really, really important, uh, and I, I really need to emphasize this. It's really important that your leadership knows not only where you're going to be, but the sort of things that you're going to talk about, and also your tolerance for behavior on social media. Now, for us, that refers to the DOD social um, media users um, agreement basically says people can say some pretty inflammatory things, um, but as, as long as they're not stepping over the line, like dropping the F-bomb or whatever, um, their comments will stay. That can be very, very uncomfortable uh, if in the middle of a campaign, you've got your boss coming in and saying, what in the world are you leaving up on the wall? You need to iron this out with leadership before you get going. So I'm going to talk a little bit about social capital. Um, and you can see Tara Hunt there holding up her book, The Wolfie Factor. Uh, Wolfie is a, is a, a name that came from a Cory Doctorow uh, novel. Um, and it was the name of a currency, but that currency was uh, not a tangible currency. Uh, it was based on your reputation. And so that's really where we start to talk about social capital is that in the world of social media, you do have capital. And the amount of capital that you have is based on 
partly your reputation. How much can you be trusted? Um, and those kinds of things. And I, I paused a little too long there. And Anita, can we go back to the last slide? I just have one other thing to say about that. So it's pretty easy to understand because social capital is not limited to the world of social media. Uh, we have social capital in our daily lives, right? Um, uh, if you, most of you have not met me. If, if, if the only way that you know me is through this webinar and tomorrow I drop you an email and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm going to be in town. Can you give me a ride from the airport to the hotel? Um, for many of you, I would assume, and some of you I'm sure are just very nice people who would help anybody, but for many of you, you might think, who, what? what? You don't, I don't really know you. In other, and what you're saying when you're saying that or thinking that is, um, you haven't built up any social capital with me. You haven't really done anything for me. You haven't really uh, built up any trust with me. Why would I do a favor for you um, if you haven't done that, if I don't really know you? And so that is an illustration of social capital at work, right? Um, and, and so let's talk that about those uh, withdrawals and deposits a little bit in our social capital account. So I like to think of it as an actual bank account um, that you make deposits in, right? And, and some of the kinds of things that are social capital deposits are very simple, simple things to do, like saying thank you, right? And somebody uh, comments on a post on your Facebook page saying, thanks for the comment. Very interesting. That's a little social capital deposit. Very easy one to do. Um, another thing that's a great social capital deposit is uh, what uh, Bruce had on a previous slide, which is tangible information. And I really like that tangible was stressed there. And I might, I might replace that with that word in my vocabulary. I might call it actionable information, things that can really help me and that I have a path to do. Not just information, not just, hey, did you know this random fact? But here's information that can really help you improve your life in some way, make things easier for you. Um, another social capital deposit is sharing, right? If, you, if uh, you're on Twitter, and you uh, retweet uh, somebody's tweet, that can be a little social capital deposit. It can be an even more effective deposit if you provide some context with that retweet and say, hey, uh, this is a great link from Bruce Moody. Uh, he's a really smart guy. You should follow it. So that, that, that giving credit to Bruce, that uh, attribution, acknowledgment, uh, builds up social capital. So those are just some ideas on, on some things that will build up social capital. Just like we have deposits in the real bank, uh, we also have withdrawals when we're talking about social capital. And so there are many things that can be social capital withdrawals, but the, the common ones that we see with organizations uh, and helping professional, professionals are asks. Anytime that you ask somebody to do something, um, it is a social capital withdrawal. It takes a little bit of their time and a little bit of their attention. Uh, please fill out my survey. Please like my page. Uh, please uh, click here. Uh, those kinds of things are social capital uh, withdrawals anytime that you're asking for something. Uh, and it might not seem like an ask. Promotional things, promoting a class or an event, um, those are social capital withdrawals. Uh, even if you're not asking, you know, please come to my event, it's still a withdrawal in promoting it because it takes a little bit of time and attention and it takes uh, that mic those microseconds for us to make a decision about are we interested in this or are we not interested in this. And so if we're not getting any direct payback from that, um, then it becomes a social capital withdrawal on the person who's, who's posting that. And so the idea is keep a positive balance in your social capital account. And what we see a lot of people do is jump on social media and start with that mass media mindset and start broadcasting stuff. Hey, have you seen this? Or here's our web page. Or please like this. Or subscribe to our newsletter. And um, what happens is they haven't built up any capital with people. Um, and they're just drawing that account down into, into a negative 
uh, balance. And, and what, what's the consequence of that is that when you really need help with somebody, right? So think that in, your, in the real world, you know, if you have a friend and maybe you're, you're just an acquaintance and you ask them to do something, maybe they begrudgingly do it and you ask them again. And it's, it's little things. Could you, you know, pick up coffee for me since you're going anyway? And, and you do all these little asks. Um, and your your social capital balance is in the negative when you really need somebody and you're like, hey, I really need help moving a couch this week. And they're like, hey, dude, you've not done anything for me. I've done all these little things for you and they're not going to be there for you. And it's really about a level of trust, you know, is that they're not going to have a very good, uh, you're not going to have a very good reputation with that person and uh, it undermines the trust. So I want to look at a couple of uh, posts here. So you can kind of see the posts behind um, where it says deposit or withdrawal. I'm trying to save some people's, uh, not call out people directly. So here's one from my Facebook feed, uh, a, a link to a GoFundMe page. Would you call this a social, for, for the person posting it, for Eric, is this a social media, social capital deposit or withdrawal? What do you think? So I'm seeing some of each. I would say that the balance probably is going to a withdrawal, right? And and I see Jerry there. That's that's how I would look at it. Um, you could look at it uh, both ways, right? For for Lisa, who is the person uh, with the GoFundMe page, who's who's having these brain surgeries and and uh, having a terrible time of it it's it's a social capital deposit for Lisa and her family right Eric builds up some credibility with them but for everybody else for me who saw this in my feed for Eric this is a withdrawal because it's an ask right and so you need to be aware of that and, and again uh, I've tried to pick some examples that were not like you know easy answers to get some conversation going in there and I think I think we're doing that in the in the chat. So I think we're on to Bruce. Okay. Can I have the next slide? Ah, okay. There, there is okay. I uh, what I would like to say about um, as a nice as a nice follow up to um, to what Bob was saying. You know, there are a lot of attempts. You know, we we, we do have to figure out um, we do have to figure out how the social media uh, is 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 really going to work. But uh, a lot of the the conversation about social capital really illustrates the fact that it's taking real relationships and real conversations and just bringing it into a different platform. And, um, you know, in, in, a, in a conversation with a, a real person, uh, you, you are going to tolerate a certain number of uh, mistakes um, depending on the, on the situation. And certainly within social media, because it is so new, new for everybody and we're all learning this at the same time even as it evolves um, daily there are going to be gaps and uh, and and what we see and what we believe at the DOD level is that um, gaps are okay gaps show that you're trying that you're out there um, now that the the, 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 the the this slide and the next illustrates that um, really more than anything else, more than a gaffe, the most dangerous thing that you can do on social media is engage people with a real deficit of credibility. Okay, so whereas maybe the, the, um, the Red Cross, um, one of the guys made a post uh, not knowing that he was still on the, his official um, Red Cross um, account, you know, this guy, um, this this guy actually uh, posted something, thinking that he was on his personal account, but he was on his professional Red Cross account. People said, "Okay, I get it. 
it, it was a mistake. Now juxtapose that with J.P. Morgan. This technically wasn't a gaffe. They did it properly. They had a Twitter chat and ask JPM, but they did it with a total lack of credibility with humanity. And so people just went at them with glee, I might say. It was a very, very fun day on social media that day. So more than gaffes. Gaffes are okay. Gaffes show that you're trying. But uh, as with personal relationships, if you don't have credibility, you, you, you're going to have a hard time getting your message out. Okay, getting your message out. Um, I used to make the, this slide look like a ladder, but um, here's here's the uh, here's here's what I'm trying to say with this. When I'm talking, when I'm engaging people on social media. I, um, I, I do this in the long term. I've got, for example, maybe I've lined up a week's worth of posts. And I make sure that these posts are, are different in structure. Structure how? Structure because I want to reach people um, who are at different levels of social media savvy. So at the very, very bottom, I've got people, fewer and fewer by the day, who just don't like social media. So. Maybe I'm reaching somebody who's inactive by putting out a press release that shows up in a magazine or a newspaper. Or maybe it shows up uh, on, a, on a TV broadcast. You watch all the time. You're watching a, a, a TV news um, uh, anchor. They will always finish up the story by saying, and you can continue this conversation on our Facebook page or on our website. So they're, they're trying to attract the inactive social media people. So maybe I'm dealing with somebody who's a lurker. You know, maybe they just have, have been looking at my Facebook page uh, and really not being uh, uh, doing anything with it. Well, I can just put out a, an, a, an interesting photo that gets them to, to click on it, to, to maybe click that they like on it. You know, there are studies that say if there's a commercial product that's advertised on social media and you click on it, you join a population of people that is so much more likely to, 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 to consume that product, to buy it, the service or, or item, whatever it is. Just the mere uh, fact of, 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 of clicking puts you in a likely to purchase category. So it's, it's, really, it's very, very valuable to get somebody from just looking at what you're doing to simply clicking on what you're doing. So now we've got the people who just click on people. Why not have uh, on a post, why not have them um, write a one-word response. We have something called fill in the blank Friday. Fill in the blank Friday, we say, we ask them a question, my, my favorite weekend exercise is, or something like that. So we're trying to engage people with very, very individual words. One word, two word, a phrase, that's all we want from them. And then we'll have a, po a couple of posts during the week where we're asking people to give us a paragraph, a vignette, a story. Um, to, 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 to give us a couple of sentences to talk about their world. And at the top of the list, we have something called Blog Brigade. It's a blog, and all of the posts are provided by military spouses. So the whole of this approach is to say, over the course of a week, I'm going to have a variety of posts that go out there, and I'm going to reach them, whoever they are, at whatever level of... Um, at whatever level of savvy with social media that they might happen to be. Now, um, hashtags, hashtags are being used on, on Twitter, of course, but also being used on Facebook. But when we use hashtags, we, 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 we use them for two, for two reasons, for, in, 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 in two ways. There are essentially two types of hashtags. There's yours and there's theirs. Right, so we have a uh, an annual campaign called Military Saves. You may have something else, or maybe you have a, an, an an issue that's happening, an incident, or or a campaign or something. You want to give it a name, a, a hashtag. That way, you can click on the hashtag and bring together all of the all of the uh, comments, all the tweets, all the Facebook posts on that particular topic. But if you want to join other people's conversations, you got to find out what what they are now. In 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 and these are these are these are hashtags that are used by a wide cross section of um, 
of, of, of people. And they're sort of organically created by the tribe. You know, I, I, I love the term tribe. I think it really does apply very, very well to we have, um, we have groups of people who really support each other uh, in, 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 in social media. And so you have to find the hashtags that those folks are using that bring them together as a community and use those in your posts. That's how you will be seen by them. Uh, this is a this is an interesting thing, and it, it kind of applies to us because um, we will travel further with photos. Now, there's a law of diminishing returns, which we don't need to worry about. It, it actually turns out that the the more popular your Twitter feed, um, the less impact um, is is a photo. But I don't think any of us <laughs> are are in that situation. So, so really what I would suggest is finding a photo that, that accompanies your, your tweets to, to really um, help to encourage more engagement with your, with your uh, tweet. And, and we use, we use, um, we use graphics. So one thing about graphics, especially in Twitter, is that you can put a lot of words on them. So when you're trying to deal with, okay, I've got, um, 140 characters, well, how do I get in more words? A, a graphic is a great way around that. We use graphics a lot when we're trying to talk about um, webinars. You know, it's, a, it, 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 it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the boring logistics of when, where, here's the link, you know, type of stuff that we can throw into the graphics. And then we can use our actual Twitter po uh, tweet to, to um, write the engaging material why you should be participating in this, in this um, webinar. Um, vary your Facebook posts. So when it comes to using Facebook, the most important member of your audience is the Facebook algorithm. Most important, absolutely most important. The Facebook algorithm is the thing that looks at your posts and says, do I want to send this out to your people? And if so, how many should I send it out to? Um, there's something called organic distribution, which doesn't happen. Organic distribution means if you have 100 followers, 100 people are going to see your posts. That doesn't happen. The reality is that if you have an organizational Facebook page, around 2 to 8%, 8% on a good day, are seeing your posts. The algorithm is what uh, tamps down the numbers. And the algorithm, the algorithm used to be three, um, three different variables that would uh, examine a post. Now there is close to 100,000 variables which are examined. Um, it's, 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 it's fantastically complicated. But the, the, the end result is a, is a, is a, is the algorithm is trying to um, ask two questions. Are you human or are you spam? And are you boring? And so you can do, you, you don't have to work too hard to produce, to, to convince the algorithm that you're human. But are you boring? Well, you need to make sure that you're varying the look of your posts. You're, you're, you're going to hear and see many, many studies that um, a, a, a Facebook post travels uh, further with a photo. That's true, but if every single one of your Facebook posts has a photo, eventually the algorithm is going to say, you're doing the same thing over and over again. So you've got to vary it. Um, and um, you know, I'm putting this slide in again at this point, honestly, because this is a real foot stomper. Um, I think what's very, very important to the people that we're engaging here today, and whenever I go out and I and I have a talk with 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 people, I need I need people to understand that the DoD wants all of its partners, all of all of the 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 uh, service providers of, from from every sector in the country to be engaging military families. That 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 
you know, a, a, a people have been coming to me and saying, should we be uh, easing back because of all the OPSEC um, concerns? Um, and, and what I tell them over and over again is that DOD, right up to the Secretary of Defense, is saying, we want you engaging military families. It's absolutely critical. Um, and you know, we need to be open because this is a new generation. We, we, we need to speak to this new generation. And this new gen, we, <laughs> we used to say, I'm all thumbs. Well, now people say I'm all thumbs, but they mean it in a good way. So we need to be open. We need to be talking to people where they are and in the manner in which they, they are comfortable speaking. Very, very important. Thank you, uh, both Bruce and Bob, uh, for presenting today. And some of our the takeaways that uh, we hope um, that you will um, be able to use and reflect on uh, in the days and weeks ahead, especially in October, uh, and that is to read the DOD and branch policy so you can start engaging military families with social media and really build those trusted relationships on social media by keeping a positive social capital balance. Uh, those deposits, as Bob referred to. I uh, use hashtags, vary your posts, and uh, following best practices. Um, so that you can really um, reach out uh, in your social media uh, strategies and uh, everyday conversations. And continue to share your story to connect. Uh, that is very important and, and what our military families are wanting as well. For evaluation and certificate of completion, Tim, we ask that you would take a brief survey to let us know your thoughts about uh, the webinar as well as any additional areas that you'd like us to really dig deeper into. You can follow the link posted on the slide in the chat pod, and also it is on the Learn Event page for today. And you should receive an email with a certificate uh, if you choose uh, shortly after you fill out uh, the needed info. The Family Transitions team would like to invite you and anyone that you know interested to register for our upcoming webinars. Our next one is, as you can see, on October 13th at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And we have um, the Learn Event page posted there. And on October 13th, Dr. Barbara O'Neill from the Minnesota Family Learning Network, no, excuse me, Military Family Learning Network, Personal Finance, and Jennifer Ray from our Family Transition Area will be teaming up to present the Military Family Financial Transitions, Handling Changes in Income, Benefits, and Money Management. And all of our upcoming webinars are posted on the site uh, that you see at the bottom of this slide. Thank you, Anita, so much. I would like to thank Bruce Moody and Bob Bursch one more once again for sharing their expertise with us today, along with the Family Transitions Concentration Area for hosting today's webinar. We'll give you all a few more moments to ask any remaining questions that you may have in the chat pod, as well as collect any links that you might need. Uh, if you do need to uh, recollect any information or uh, get any follow-up information regarding today's webinar, please refer back to the Learn page uh, that we've been talking of throughout today's webinar. That's your one-stop shop. The recording will also be posted within 48 hours of today's webinar, along with the slides that are already there. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us. And we hope to see you at another uh, webinar or professional development opportunity in the near future, not just for the Family Transitions team, but for all of our concentration areas. Thank you again, and we hope you have a lovely day.
Folks, also note that the link to the uh, evaluation as well as the uh, certificate of completion questionnaire will be posted to the learn of it if you are not able to fetch it from the chat pod today. So we need to be signing off at this moment. So thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Have a lovely day.